but uh, we okay we have to find uh, the arc lengths of some curve uh, the curves we are going to study here most of them are just the graph of a function so very simple problem okay um, given given the graph okay it's, it's a curve okay how to find the arc lens this is a project yeah how to find the arc lens so you already learned Riemann sum then the integrals right now probably you can derive the formula by yourself uh, what I'm trying to do, I'm not going to go through the details how to set up the, uh, uh, in, uh, yeah, find the formula for the arc lens. So what I'm going to do is I'm trying to do a slide differently. Okay. So for the curve, okay, this I let S to denote the arc lens. Okay, from uh, uh, from point P to point Q. And uh, so the length, so the, then the length is very simple. The length function is just the integral from L and DS. That's the simplest formula, okay, you can have. Okay. So what is the S here, right? So the S is, uh, is some variable, it's arc length from P to Q. From P to Q. Okay, so if the arc length of this curve is L, then you have this simple integral. Okay. The next step is, uh, because this is a point, depends on x and y, okay? So if I, yeah, let me draw a uh, picture a bit. So this is a point x, it's point y. And ds is something like that, okay? The tiny change in the parameter of, of the, uh, uh, in the arc lens. So this, this depend on, that was a change in the X variable and then changing the Y variable. So you apply the Pythagorean theory, this will be the square of the DX square plus DY square, okay? Right? So we are doing something different from the book, but that's a very useful idea to, to, to find the formula. So you can, use x variable, you can use a y variable, okay? But you can also use the arc lens, okay? Arc lens is also a variable, okay? To describe the, the point. So ds is, what is ds case? ds is the is the lens of, the, 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 of this tiny triangle, okay? And dx is tiny changing x, dy is tiny changing y variable. Then, so then they're related by this Pythagorean theory. And add this tiny bit arc lens together, you get total the lens. This is a rough idea, okay? So, so, uh, so, this, so this L, and then you can, uh, sorry, you can uh, take dx out, you will get something like this. If you take dy out, you will get And you can also parameterize uh, this curve using, using, uh, using two functions, uh, using two functions. That's another way to parameterize. If that is the case, then you can also divide this by, by dt. Okay, so dt is an independent variable. 
like an independent party, DX is democratic and DY, you know, republic, okay, whatever. <laughs> okay, so, so you can use an, another variable to describe this curve. You can use the X variable to describe this curve. You can use the Y variable to describe. So you, it depends on, yeah, the situation, which one you prefer, okay? And then, then you, 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 you determine the interval for the X variable. You can determine the um, interval of the Y variable. You can determine the interval of the X variable, T, okay? Uh, uh, the T variable, okay? So we use that formula uh, to evaluate the arc length on the curve. That's it. I, I'm not going to memorize a formula, uh, a specific formula given in the book. Uh, I use this most uh, simple uh, formula that just ds, integral ds. Okay, so now we're going to do the problem. Let's do one by one. Okay, find a, a setup of integral represent the length of the uh, of the curve. Okay, so this is uh, the first problem. Uh, yeah, S set up an integral Oops. for the lens uh, for the lens of the curve. Oops, I don't know what happened to this classroom always. Have trouble with the screen here. for the length of the curve. Right. This curve is is actually the graph of the function y for sine x, and x is between zero and the pi. Right. So this is going to be the sine curve. Right. I want to know the length of this curve. Uh, well, the length is going to be L, right? The number, okay? So the length is going to be integral from L ds, no problem. And okay, that's a simplest format. You know so ds, and uh, I don't know which one is better. I think uh, you should use uh, d, uh, d1 uh, plus dy dx, because dy dx is easy to find out. Right, so x is our side. So what is the interval x? So from zero to pi. Right. Okay. Then, then the derivative y with respect to x is cosine x. So this is the integral for the for the arc length of the curve. Okay. The second one will be. Uh, Set up an integral for the length. Okay, the curve is given by y square equals natural log x, and y is between negative and the positive. Now, in this case, it's easier to find the. I don't know. There are two ways to describe the function. Okay, natural log of square y square equals, uh, natural x equals y square. So y is between negative and positive one, okay? So this x is going to be e to the y square. As you can see that, right? And x is always positive. Y could be negative, right? Could be negative and positive. So the graph, is a little bit strange. The graph will be, so when y is zero, it's one. It's going to be like something like that, okay? Yeah. Okay. All right, so it's easy to find the dx of a dy, all right? Uh, it's easy to find dx and y. That's going to be e to the y square and two y, okay? So now uh, the length is integral from L to L and ds, and ds is going to be dx of a dy square plus one dy, okay? Yeah, 
So y is from negative one to positive one. And you replace the integral e to the y square and the 2y square and plus 1 dy. Okay? So this is will be the answer. Okay, you are not able to evaluate, it's complicated. And in some cases, it's impossible. You can only estimate use a compute software. Uh, okay, let's look at the circle. Yeah, let's look at the circle. Okay. Uh, set up the integral for the, sometimes you can evaluate, sometimes you cannot. Set up the integral for the length of the circle with the radius r, okay? That's called the circumference, right? Maybe we can find out, you know, the length. All right, let's do this. This is a, you just need to look at the up semicircle if you want, you know, right, double it, right? So the graph, <coughs> yeah, how do we describe it? Okay. Well, if you use the up semicircle, then this y equals r square minus x square, right? You can also use the right semicircle. The right semicircle will be x equals r square minus y square. This for for that portion. Okay, that right. So it really doesn't matter which one you're going to use. Okay, so the lens. So the lens. Is going to be integral from double it from negative r to positive r squared one plus dy of dx squared dx. Right? If this is up semicircle, using up semicircle, you double it. Find the length of up semicircle, double it, and you get the length of the whole circle, the, the circumference. Okay? And then over there, you can differentiate this. The derivative of y with respect to x, I think it will be r square minus x square, and here is just x, negative sign. So you put square and dx. Okay. Uh, you can simplify it, you will get You will get uh, here is a one plus r square, r square minus x square. When you combine it, you will get r square. Uh, this is x square, yeah. So r square minus x square plus x square, just r square. So when you take a square root of this, it's going to be r and r square minus x square dx. So maybe you can evaluate this integral, okay? Maybe you can evaluate this integer. Uh, let's try. Why not, right? So x equals sine theta, then dx equals cosine theta d theta, right? And the theta is between, uh, uh, theta is between, uh, between negative pi over 2 and the positive pi over 2, right? Uh, this is R, yeah. That should be R here. Right, so it's going to be integral theta is from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And here's R. And the denominator is R square minus R square sine square theta. And here R cosine theta d theta. And uh, it's not too bad. You know, you, you cancel the R. Uh, 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 cancel sine 
when square when a uh, square root of one minus sine square theta is going to be cosine theta, cosine theta cancel out. So it's just r is theta. Okay, so it's two r, then pi minus negative pi over two, which is just pi. So two pi r. So this is a familiar formula, you know, the, the circumference of a circle. Right? But if you use the right, if you use the if you use a, the right semicircle, and then you have to use this one. Right? And the, the length is given by a similar formula. Uh, it is going to be one plus actually here's dx dy and d d and dy, right? You will get the same uh, 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 result. You still get the same result to two pi r. Okay, no problem. Uh, you can also parameterize the circle by. Uh, yeah, we are going to study this later. Actually, uh, no, we did that before. Yeah, it's parameter. Yeah. Parameterization chapter like, yeah. A little bit later, yeah, we're going to start this. So it's going to be R cosine T, Y equals R sine T. T is between zero and the two pi, right? So you can describe the circle using, <coughs> using the yeah, complete circle. T is the angle, right, radius. So you, you go in around the counterclockwise, then you get the whole circle. Then ds is going to be, you know, right, dx squared plus dy squared. So instead of taking dx out, I put dt, divided dt. Okay. Then you square it. Uh, that is going to be the derivative of x with respect to t uh, is going to be negative r sine t square. And here's r cosine t square and the dt. And what's inside is just r square. So when you simplify it, it's get a very simple one. And this is a, sometimes, you know, you can use a different parameterization instead of uh, x or y variable, you know. so. So, so the length is going to be integral. Yeah, this is the original formula, right? And that's going to be replaced by the to two pi and r dt. Okay, r is constant, so so simple, right? So you get still two pi r. So if you ask it to find the length of the length of a curve, well, if you can reparameterize if you want, okay? But you can also use the given function directly. So this is uh, going to be uh, here. Okay, find the uh, find the uh, exact. Find the exact length of the curve. So this time we have to evaluate integral, it's not just only set up the integral. So there are several problems there. Let's look at the even number problem. Right? Uh, yeah, let's do this one first. Okay, why is it between one and two? Now, clearly, this is a, a, a given. This is a equation. The curve is given by this equation x equals some function depends on y. Okay, so it's easy to find the derivative of x with respect to y. Okay, so that is going to be uh, one half y cubed. And 
plus minus actually is one half y cubed. Right? Can you see that? Yeah, y to the negative one when differentiate the degree y to the negative three. So negative two over four is gonna be negative one half. Okay. And uh, so let's calculate this ds first. That'd be dx over dy squared plus one and dy, right? Yeah, ds is a uh, is a differential of the arc lengths. Yes. Okay. So now you have y cube minus divided by two. Okay, let's simplify it. We hope we can get rid of the. Uh, we hope we can get rid of the of the radical. Otherwise, we are not able to evaluate. So it's going to be y cube over two square, and the product of this two. When I do the product, it's negative one half times one half. It's one half, negative one half, plus the square and the plus one. Right? But negative one half become plus one become positive one half. Then you realize that you can still group them together as a, as a, as a square. The only difference is here is this negative sign now becomes positive sign. Negative one half, positive one half. So all I have to do is just change the sign inside the, this uh, parenthesis. So this should be equal to y cubed over two and plus, okay, and then, then dy, okay? Now you're able to Get rid of okay. So this is a DS. Okay, as long as we complete this part, then we are able to evaluate uh, uh, the integral. Uh, y is from one to two. Okay, so the length is the integral. L, this is ds, you can change the dy from 1 to 2, and y cubed over 2 plus this, okay? So y is from 1 to 2. Uh, okay, then you find the antiderivative of this function. So the antiderivative will be the first one. I think it would be, uh, uh, so it's, it's going to be 8 of y to the fourth power. And this other one, it's one half y to the negative 3. So the entire derivative will be one half negative 3 plus 1, y to the negative 3 plus 1. So it will be negative a quarter y to the negative 3. So if you differentiate, you will get that function, okay? Then you plug Then you, yeah, this is a eight, two to the fourth power, two to the negative two, and minus one eight, minus one quarter, because when that y equals one, just the one. So let's simplify this. Two to the fourth is just two. This is going to be one over 16. Yes. Minus, minus one over eight minus one over four will be negative one over eight. It's a positive one over eight. So then you then you get two plus one over sixteen. Right? Okay. And uh, yeah, combine them into one. Now 
that was a question whether we should write as 2 and 116. I think we should avoid using this notation because in advanced mathematics, we, if we put the two things together, it means a product, okay? Like AB means A times B, okay? So, so you should either separate them or just write as a proper fraction, 33 over 16, okay? So this is, a, a, this is what we have to solve the problem. You know, if you, yeah, the most, for most of the problems, we have a trouble to evaluate because inside the radical, it could be very complicated, okay? But then with, for some problems given in the book, and you are able to uh, simplify the integral, yeah, simplify the integral, okay? To get rid of radical by getting rid get, by getting rid of the radicals. Yeah, there are many problems like that. You can you can simplify it. And, uh, and, and then evaluate integrals. You can get rid of radi radical. So like a one minus e to the negative x, x is between zero and three, right? Find the length of this curve, and uh, it's harder to draw the graph when x equals zero. When x equals zero, this is gonna be, zero right but when x increases and this can be right this could be getting close close to one okay anyway this is kind of a curve right when x is cos two the y value will be one minus e to the negative two so are we able to find the length of this piece So clearly, yeah, uh, the length is going to go from L and DS, right? We should use the Y variable, uh, X variable. So it's going to be one plus DY over DX square and DX. X is already given, the interval X is already given from zero to two, okay? So let's find, in, uh, let's, let's find the derivative. And that derivative is going to be just e to the negative x squared. Yes, right? Now how do I evaluate this integral? Okay. <clears throat> uh, are we, you know, I cannot get rid of square radicals here. So we can, if you don't like the negative uh, power, and that is going to be e plus e to the two x, right? So you take e to the two x out. Yeah, not sure we're able to evaluate e to the so I'm going to use a substitution. Okay, I like I I yeah let u to be e to the x. Maybe that that help. Okay, so du equals e to the x dx. Right, so the integral when x. Yeah, when x equals zero and the and u is one, right? When x equals two, u is going to be squared. Okay, so the integral becomes uh, one e squared. It's u squared plus one e to the x, and dx is going to be also e to the x du, right? So that will be u squared.
Nej. We may use another substitution to evaluate, but at this point, I think we should look at the formula in the book, you know, as a, the last formula. But, uh, let's see. We can, uh, you say u squared plus one. Another substitution you can choose is tangent u equals tangent theta, okay? Uh, but I think we can find the formula, yes. Okay, so the formula, this is the formula number 24. Okay, it says that the entire derivative will be <clears throat> of course, when I, if I put the problem on the test, since you're not allowed it to use formula from the backside of the book, uh, uh, so I probably carefully to, yeah, check that first before I put it, okay? Yes, maybe you have to use substitution, but I don't want you to end up with another uh, integral after you use substitution. The main focus is to evaluate, to find the exact length of uh, the, the curve, okay? So now it's going to be negative e squared e squared and the square, and e to the fourth power, okay? And if you have an h log, E squared plus one plus e, e to the fourth power. Okay, and then you you subtract by one the square root two h log of one plus square root two. Okay, we are now able to simplify. This is to the same number, but this is the exact length of the curve. Okay, so let's look at another curve. Uh, here's a curve. Oops. Okay, the curve is given by the equation y y cube equals x squared. Okay. Find the the length of the arc of the curve from from the point negative one in the way to the point eight and the four. So when x equals uh, eight. The y value is four. Okay, you can look at that. One cube equals negative one square, and then four cube equals eight square. Okay, so the indeed there's also two points on the curve, but it's harder to draw the graph. Okay, and I think you can you can also express the function in this form. Okay, look at this. Uh, when x equals negative one, y value is one. Okay, when x, I think this is the even function. Okay, when x equals eight, y value is four. How does the graph look like? Looks like that. Okay. It's a symmetric about the y-axis because this is going to be, uh, this is going to be an even function. 
right? Even function to square, okay? There is a cusp here. This function is not differentiable everywhere. Okay, the function is uh, the derivative doesn't does not exist. So be careful when you when you when you evaluate this integral. Okay. So let's set up an integral with, uh, with two uh, uh, with respect to x and with respect to y. Let's see, what's the question here? Uh, formula three and four to set up two integrals for the arc lens. So this is a, uh, uh, so you have to calculate it separately because um, for this one, you see that the function is continuous, right? Everywhere, but it's not differential about this point when x equals zero. Okay, so so the, the integral you can set up, you have to use, uh, yeah, the lens, is going to be integral from zero to L ds. So we have to figure out the ds, right? So ds uh, is going to be one plus dy over dx squared dx, okay? So it's going to be one plus the derivative of that function will be negative one third and square and dx. So this will be the singular point. Uh, the function is not defined when x equals zero. Okay. So when you square it, When you square it, this is going to be, yeah, this is two here. So this is not defined function when x equals zero. So that integral would be improper integral, okay? So the, uh, the length is going to be when x is from negative one to, when x from negative one to eight, okay? It's one plus, Four over nine x to the two over three dx. Okay. So you really have to separate this integral because the function is not defined at its origin. And those are the improper integral. Okay. So the the difficult part is how do we how do we evaluate this integral, any of them, right? I'm find, trying to find the entire derivative of this function. Okay, you have to find the entire derivative of this function. Find the entire derivative of this function. Could we uh, use substitution, right? Maybe. X could be negative here, right? So let's use a, let's try and use a different substitution here. Let u to be uh, X to the one third, how about this? Then that would be u squared, right? You know, that's one of the possible substitution we can choose. So du equals negative one third x to the four over three, okay, and dx. Okay.
So in other words, dx equals negative three, x to the four over three in du. Four over three is going to be, going to be this, okay? Right? Uh, yeah. So this is going to be the integral of one plus four over nine. You, oops. I'm saying I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. Square and negative one third u to the fourth power du. It does not simplify it at all. You can, you, yeah, this is probably not the best substitution. Right, you try this, but you create u to the fourth power in the denominator. Another way, yeah, let's try in different ways, okay? So this does not look good. Now, sometimes you cannot evaluate, okay? So it's one plus four over nine x to the three over two dx. I can take uh, the denominator. Uh, this is going to be uh, one plus four over nine x to the three over two dx. Yeah. Okay. So you take x out. Yeah, you take the x out, you will get, now x could be negative, right? So when you take this out, you will get x to the three over two. Next two over three, plus four over nine. Then this will be the denominator, x to the one third and dx. So another substitution you can try is let u to be x to the two thirds plus four over nine, okay? Uh, yeah, we assume that here as the x is positive, otherwise there is a absolute value of x here if we choose, okay? So, so du equals, Right? Yeah. Do you record that? That's great. So this matches this. Yeah. So when X is positive, uh, when X is positive, otherwise you have to plus minus sign here. Okay. So when X is positive, this is going to be the integral square U. Okay. And DX over that, is going to be just three over two du, okay? Yeah, it depends on the size. So we assume that here the x is positive. So you get this integral. So it's very simple now, okay? So you will, you will see that uh, this is going to be the antiderivative is going to be, um, yeah, two thirds u to the one half. The antiderivative just u to the, so you have a two, so this is just antiderivative, okay? And plus constant, okay? So you will get uh, square root of, uh, what is u? u is a, yeah, it's cube. Okay, and plus constant. So this is an anti-derivative. And it's still true even when x is, uh, I think when x is negative. When x is negative, uh, 
you will get same. Yeah, you get same result. Okay, so so this is the entire derivative. We find it, and then you go back to the integral. Right, you can use the ease of them. <coughs> the length is going to be right. Remember the integral of uh, of the from negative one to zero. So this is going to be x to the two of three plus four over nine zero over two from uh, negative one to zero. Okay. Now this is even in proper integral. Zero means you just let let epsilon go to zero, okay? And another one, and from zero to eight. But you will see that for that special one, that okay, even when you break the integral into two parts, but then when x equals zero, that part will be canceled out. So actually you will get, uh, you actually will get the eight to the two over three plus four over nine to the three over two minus negative one to the two over three plus four over nine. Okay. So that is the answer. Okay, you can simplify it. You will get uh, 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 four plus four over nine, and this will be one. Yeah, it's still harder to. Yeah, it's, it's harder to simplify. Okay, I don't see we can have a. You know, we can make it a little bit simpler, but uh, but it will be. Yeah, the, this will be in a four, four over nine, and ten. Okay, because four taken out of one plus one over nine is ten over nine. And this will be three over two, and this will be uh, thirteen over nine, three over two. It's harder to make it further simplification. Okay, so this is the arc length of. Yeah, this is the arc length. Uh, you can. Uh, uh, yeah, you can evaluate. It takes long time now. I want to set up the integral for the for the function two different ways for the for this piece. Uh, look at yeah, look at this problem again, and y cube equals x square. Okay, but this time I only consider the piece from zero to zero and the one and the one. Okay, we set up three integrals for the arc length of this curve. How to do that, and depends on which one you look simpler. Okay, so this one, uh, the arc lens is going to be integral, right? From from L yeah ds, right? So you can use ease of them. You can use one, you can use this one, right? Then here x is from zero to one. Right. Then you have to solve for y in terms of in terms of x. So you end up with this integral. And if solve for y, so y is going to be x to the two thirds, right? Oops. You can also solve for x. X is going to be y to the three over two. If we, yeah, if you hear dy over dx, that means you have to use this. You can use this. It's negative one third and square and dx. But you can also uh, use another equation. So that means you're going to get dx of dy square plus one and dy because the y variable is also between zero and one. Now in this case you get another integral, right? So the derivative of y 
was the row of x was with respect to y would be three over two y and the one half and square plus one. And you will see that this is much maybe simpler because when you differentiate, when you square it, it's nine over two, right? And here's just y, it's a linear function. So sometimes when you change the variable, and you will simplify the integral, okay? For other one, it's more complicated, and they have to be very, you know, sometimes you lead, they will end up with the wrong substitution, just like what we did at the very beginning, you know, right? So this one, it's easy to see which substitution you can choose. So you can uh, let u to be nine over two y plus uh, nine over four y plus one. Okay, so du equals 9 over 4 dy. So the integral is going to be, okay, uh, u to the 1 half, dy is going to be 4 over 9 du, when the y equals 0, u is 1, y equals 1, u is going to be 13 over, over 4. Okay, so the entire derivative is going to be 3 over 2, u to the 3 over 2. Yes. And evaluate at the two end point. And that will be 13 over 4 to 3 over 2 minus 1. See, I think if we use uh, the y variable, and you will be uh, much, you get much, uh, yeah, make it easier. So if you use the X variable, then as you can see that the entire derivative, it took us a long time to figure out the entire derivative use the X variable, right? So if you use the X variable, you have to find the entire derivative like that, okay? You have to use a sub smart substitution to, to simplify. If you use the wrong substitution, you will never get it. So for some functions, for some curves, this can be described by a function of x, and you know, this also can describe a function of y, okay? So there, there's a two, two uh, possible options. Then you have to decide which one is better, like the y cube equals x squared, right? There's two different ways to describe this curve. And uh, using second one, you find out you simplify it quickly. And you get a linear function inside radicals and you solve the problem. Okay, uh, finally, let's look at this function. E to the X. Okay, hold on. Uh, I'm going to find the uh, the length of the curve y equals f of x for x squared than a less than b and the area under this graph for x squared than a less than b. Let's set up this two integral. So first of all, I have to find the derivative, right? It's going to be a quarter e to the x, right? It's a, it is e to the x plus negative e to the x. Okay. 
And uh, so ds is going to be 1 plus f prime x squared dx. So I'm going to simplify it. So we have the the problem I can get rid of radicals. Okay. So you will get 1 plus 16. I'm not using 16, just use a, a quarter. Okay. So when I multiply this out, it's just one half and plus e to the negative x squared dx. Okay. If you write this way, see, one and the negative one half becomes positive one half. Okay. So you will get So finally, you will get right because inside it's just a square. You can yeah put a square here, so you can you can get yeah. This is a very interesting function. You will see that with show you. Okay, so so the length of that curve is going to be integral from a to b right and that that is one plus f prime x square dx right so what is that hey right. i'm not going to evaluate this this is the integral everybody knows how to evaluate this but the area The area under the region is just the integral of the function. Okay. So this is nothing but but this integral again. So both have the same integral. So that means for this particular function, length equal to the area, okay? What do we get here is actually one plus f prime x square equals fx. That's the main reason, okay, for this particular function, okay? Since for this function, So this function, yeah, it satisfies this equation. Okay, so so you can always uh, so you can repress this, you know, by by f of. That's why that you end up with the same same integral, and then the length is equal to the area. That's funny. Okay, uh, the graph is a uh, When x equals zero, I think it's just five, four over five. When x increases, I think it's going up. Okay. So any, I'm not. I'm talking about not units. Just look at the numerical numbers. The area is going to be the arc length. It's a funny curve. <laughs> so yeah, the area is going to be. Uh, yeah, in other words, in PD, you know, how do we find this function? You can see that I want a function like that, right? Then you square it. Now you get, you get this, right? Then you get something like that, right? Then you want to, Solve this equation, and you, if you use a maple, you know, mathematically there's some commands you can use. Solve this equation, you get that function, and we put it here, and you can exercise. So this is a function, so that the arc length of over any interval 
is going to be the area of the region of an, any interval. Right? Yeah. So this is a this two are equivalent. Right? And you can check that they are uh, yeah, they are both the same. Right? So we stop here and uh, I did all the exercise and you have to uh, when you get home, you know, make sure you do the homework before the next.